I'm here live today at the chalkboard. I'm going to do this a little differently today and see how it goes. Maybe if I um, use a few um, visual cues, then everything that I teach will land a little bit more. Uh, I am going to go over a couple things today. Um, I'll start uh, when we get a couple more people uh, watching live and I'll tell you guys all about what I've been learning and all about what I'm going to be teaching you guys. So I'm really excited to dive in today to talk about when you make a goal for yourself, when you make a commitment and you have those moments where you just either say screw it and you throw things out the window or you have a hard time just staying consistent with whatever it is that you're trying to stay consistent with. So uh, I will start by saying that this past weekend, so not the weekend coming up obviously, the weekend that just passed, I participated in something called the Landmark Forum and it was pretty powerful. Uh, if anyone who's listening has done the Landmark Forum before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things. If you want any more information on that, then just tag me in the comments and I can tell you all about my experience and what I got out of it. But one of the things that we talked about there was how to deal with what they call a breakdown. So we all set goals and create commitments and create these big outcomes or these big possibilities for ourselves. So I'm gonna put that on the board. So we have here, we have our goal. So what happens when you have a goal or when you set a goal for yourself and you are down here um, the one thing that you can clearly see that happens is that there's this big gap. So there's this gap right here between who you are and where your goal is and that's totally okay i mean it's kind of exciting like you're going to be this whole new person you're going to have all these new skills you're going to develop you're going to learn you're going to be committed to whatever it is you're after and it's really exciting and really inspiring and really motivating but sometimes it actually can create a bit of a discrepancy and make you feel a little bit down on yourself and get distracted so you're not this person yet so you got some work to do, we're working on it, we're being committed, we're trying to be consistent with our actions and our habits, and we're down here. So let's say that the goal is tracking your macros. So our goal over here is tracking our macros, and we're working on it, we're working on it, and then one day you find yourself in front of the fridge eating cake, and you know this cake doesn't fit your macros. So it happens to everybody. We all have goals, we all have commitments, and those goals, we don't stick to them 100% of the time. So what do we do when we have those weaker moments where we're not being consistent with where the kind of person that we want to be? This is the kind of person that we want to be. So what normally happens when we're not trying to be this, when we're not being consistent with this person is we focus on what's wrong. So let's say here. So we focus on something's wrong. So something's wrong, we're eating cake, we're not tracking it, we're going over our macros, and we're really focusing on that. So understand this is conceptual. So I'm gonna use an example of my actual life that's gonna help put this, uh, make this a little bit more clear. So an example of my actual life is last year, I decided to stop competing in weightlifting. And that meant, you know, I've been training instead of exercising, for six years, six years, I mean my entire life, I've, the only exercise I ever did was to be competitive at something. So last year when I decided to stop competing, it was really hard for me to find the motivation to get in the gym. But this year, my goal has been that I want to get to the gym to participate in the classes at the CrossFit gym five days a week, and I wanna just exercise to just be healthy, to feel good about myself, and to get better. The Gap is that I'm not that person yet. I don't go to the gym five days a week. Sometimes I find an excuse not to go. And in those moments where they're weaker, 
and I don't go to the gym, I focus on what's wrong. So what I mean by I focus on what's wrong is that I'll focus on why didn't I get to the gym. I'll, I'll go to my husband, Michael, and I'll say, hey, Michael, you didn't come with me to the gym. You know, it's so much easier for me if you come with me to the gym. I try and find a gym partner. I try and reschedule my work day to make the gym fit in. I try and figure out, you know, what time of the day I should go to the class. You know, maybe 5.30 is better, maybe 10 o'clock is better. And then focusing on what went wrong. And what went wrong is that I didn't go to the gym. But when we're focusing over here, there's something that we're not focusing on which is right here. So if I'm focusing on what's wrong, I'm forgetting about the goal altogether. So now I'm moving in this direction. And if I'm moving in that direction, I'm moving further away from my goal instead of working towards my goal. So the what we can do to avoid that or to work out of that, so that's my example. So when I don't go to the gym, I focus on what went wrong. I focus on rescheduling, I focus on doing a little bit less work, figuring out what time of the day works. But instead, what I wanna do is take action towards my goal. Regardless of whether the, where the breakdown was, where I wasn't following my goal, where the issue came up, regardless of that, I wanna be taking action towards my goal. But if I'm focusing on what's wrong, I'm not taking any action towards my goal. So what we can do to change that would be to identify it. So another part of the landmark form was talking about language. So language helps you define things and become aware of things. It creates distinctions in the world. So an example would be if I was, if, I, if we're talking about a tennis player. I've never played tennis in my life. I'm gonna pretend like you've never played tennis. And when a ball is being served over the net, all I see is a super fast ball going across the net. But what Serena Williams is going to see, she's going to see the speed of the ball. She's going to see if it's a if it's a backspin on the ball. She's going to see where it's going to land. She's going to see how close it is to the net. She's going to know where her feet positions should be. And she's going to have words for each of those things. You know, backspin, backhand, overhand, whatever it is that the words are in tennis that language helps her play a better game. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a language around this. What word that the landmark decided to use was breakdown. So if we can just say out loud, hey, I'm having a breakdown. This is a breakdown right now. You can call it banana, you can call it um, slip up, you can call it moment of weakness, you can call it whatever it is that you want to call it. But when you notice that you're focusing on something wrong instead of focusing on the goal, say it out loud or even talk about this with someone that you know, like your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your friends, so that they can help differentiate it for you. And then you're going to say it out loud, like break down. And what you're going to do once you've said that out loud is you're going to immediately stop what you're doing and take an action towards your goal. So you're going to stop focusing on something wrong and you're going to take an action towards the goal. So for me and my example is I didn't go, this morning is a perfect example. My husband Michael went to the gym at 530 in the morning. It was double grace. I didn't really want to do double grace. I didn't want to go to the gym at 5.30 in the morning, so I slept. I continued to sleep and I didn't go to the gym. That is not taking me towards my goal. What I focus, I could have done was focus on, you know, maybe I could go the next day, like why didn't I wake up in the morning? Maybe I should go to sleep a little bit earlier and focus on what went wrong. Instead, I decided to identify that this was a breakdown and now I needed to take an action towards my goal. So my action was, I got Michael to write me a workout and I went and I went and did a workout. So I got a workout done at my own house. I did a hundred wall balls on the side of the house and that was my action moving towards the goal instead of focusing on what's wrong. When you focus on what's wrong, you can be so tough on yourself and it ends up being, okay, I'm gonna focus on why was I, why did I eat this cake? Why do I even have it in the house? Why did I buy these foods? What foods do I need to stop buying? 
All of those things you're going to focus on instead of just actually focusing on the action that you need to take towards the goal. And that action can be putting the cake back or making yourself a high volume meal full of vegetables and proteins. It could be um, going to the grocery store and buying a bunch of food that's going to help you stay on track. Whatever it's going to be that's for you, that is going to be an action towards whatever your goal is, is what you want to focus on. So this type of framework can work in any situation where you're here and your goal is somewhere where you're not. That can be you want to have a loving relationship with your husband. It could be that you want to exercise. It could be that you want to track your macros. It could be that you want to be a music superstar. Whatever it is that your goal is, you can use this framework every single time. So let's say it's, I want to have a loving relationship with my husband. That's my goal. It's my goal. Every single day, I want to have a loving relationship with my husband. I'm down here. There's a gap. So he does something like he doesn't get the milk from the convenience store when I've asked him to get the milk on the way home. I have an option. I can focus on what's wrong. Why didn't you get the milk? How come you didn't do that? You don't, you don't listen to me. I could focus on that. I could get angry. I could get frustrated. Or instead, I could take an action towards the goal of having a loving relationship with my husband. And that might be asking, giving, asking him if we can go together to the grocery store and get some milk together. Maybe we can make, make a recipe together and find some ingredients and do that together. But that is a choice and an action to make towards the goal instead of focusing on what went wrong. That is a tip for today on how to deal with any breakdowns that you have when you're working towards your goals. And throughout this, if any of you have any questions, you can post it in the comments and I will answer any of the questions that you have, whether it's about this framework or it's about the Landmark Forum. I know it's uh, it might be hard to understand with my graph, but I hope I did a good job of providing a number of examples to help you guys uh, apply this in your own life. So if you have an example and you wanna put it in the comments and you want me to help you out, uh, ask any questions, then let me know. I hope this was helpful. I know it was a short Facebook Live today, but I was super motivated by this whole framework, and it's actually something that I used this morning, so uh, I really hope that you guys find it equally as useful, and I will see you guys here again next Friday, and I do believe, actually, that it's going to be Coach Kelsey that's here next Friday, and she's going to be talking about some really awesome stuff. And I am super excited to see that. And thank you for listening. Bye, guys.